Okay. There's Tonight, no an urgent reason. plea from a Why? local nonprofit for we the state's health. We shouldn't have a full uh, house when it comes to all of our beds being utilized by traffic boys. And tonight, an urgent plea from a local nonprofit for the state's help to care for an oftentimes forgotten population, the boy victims of sex trafficking. After taking us inside a Central Florida safe house, the only one in the country dedicated to male human trafficking victims, I-Team investigator Kylie McGivern reveals the state's own count of boys being sold for sex continues to grow. The nonprofit's five beds, though, are rarely all filled. The state of Florida told us we need and want a boy safe home. And now, a couple years later, they act like we don't exist. The boys need the help. They're the boys that are out there. Kevin Malone, CEO of the U.S. Institute Against Human Trafficking, tells the I-Team a lack of state referrals to fill beds over the last five years threatens to shutter the state's only safe home for boy trafficking victims. The program also provides therapy and life skills. We've reached out to everyone. We've We've talked to everyone that, that we can, can get a hold of. Including a letter to the governor last year. Malone writing, the current model of placing victims in safe home beds is a failure by your administration and threatens to re-victimize hundreds of trafficking victims across Florida. Taking a closer look at the need, DCF's own data reveals of the 1,900 reports of alleged human trafficking its abuse hotline received last year, 308 were for boy victims. This marks a 2% increase from the year before, something the state attributes to more extensive trainings on boy victimization. If they are not going to your safe home, mm. where are these boys ending up? That's the biggest concern, Kylie. Is I think they go to juvenile justice facilities. They maybe go to group homes. They, I don't know really where they're going. In Florida, children have the power to say whether they want to go or stay at a safe house. DCF says while some human trafficking survivors require the level of care provided at a safe house, some may be more appropriately served in their own home with community-based wraparound services, and others may need a higher level of care, such as a residential substance abuse or mental health treatment center. Out of all those numbers in the state of Florida, there's not five that could use our help, our wraparound services. The state has verified 156 boys as sex trafficking victims since 2017. What just about any advocate like Nilda Otero will tell you is an undercount. Boys, they're not for coming. They were raised to stay, stay, I am a man. I cannot show feelings. I cannot cry. I am not a coward. So the self-disclosure is unfortunately unreported or even identified. Otero, a survivor mentor, works with boy sex trafficking victims, including those living in the safe house. I went through my own victimization um, at a young age, and that's something that I really didn't talk about to anybody. So with me just saying to them, I understand where you're coming from because this has happened, right there breaks that wall between us. Both Malone and Otero say that many of the boys they're seeing are part of the LGBTQ community, transgender. Because they're not receiving the support at home, they're seeking it elsewhere. And that's what's gonna lead them into trafficking. Social media, video games, luring boys into a reality darker than the game on their screen. Traffickers are using the video game systems to talk to boys to be like, hey, I wanna be your friend, let's meet up. You're seeing that? Yes. Last year, the I-Team uncovered new details in a human trafficking case out of St. Petersburg involving two teen boys. Teenage victim in this case was lured away from his family with promises of a better life. Instead, he was moved into a filthy trailer and used as a sex slave for nearly a year. Meanwhile, Alicia, or Coco Algier, is currently serving a 15-year prison sentence for human trafficking after her arrest in 2013. Investigators say they found a child under the age of 18 being used for prostitution in one of the hotel rooms. According to Algiers' plea agreement, a follow-up investigation revealed her victims included two teen boys, 15 and 16, who she met at a DMV office in Tampa, recruited and then advertised for sex under the transsexual section of Backpage. One said they gave her half the money they earned and he would do up to 30 dates a day, seven days a week, 
for two months. Another victim told law enforcement yet another boy being trafficked who is transgender was on a missing person flyer at the time. As the U.S. Institute Against Human Trafficking pushes for help in identifying victims and connecting them with available support, Otero has a message for those who feel alone. It's okay to speak up because there are people here that are here for you and are here to listen and here to help you. A lot of kids are going unseen and we need to bring them to the light. I'm I-Team investigator Kylie McGivern taking action for you.